Today we're doing an F1 race, but every lap the F1 game is going to get newer. Yep, we're going through all the modern era Codemasters F1 games from F1 2009 all the way to F1 23. You may remember earlier this year before the summer, we actually did the reverse of this where every lap the game got older. Definitely go check that video out before you watch the rest of this one. And one of the top comments was we should definitely do this the other way around and get newer as we go on. We're going to be doing every lap and then therefore every game in this video driving the Ferrari. So we're almost going to get a little look also at how the Ferrari car stacked up against the grid as the years went on. This opening lap of this race is just not going to go well, is it? Here we go. Lap one on F1 2009. Five red lights and we are underway. Oh, it's a good start for us compared to the BMW Sabre. I think that was. We've got the uh, McLaren on the right. What's brake? I don't even know what. Oh, that is definitely not brake. What is the brake? I keep looking backwards and it's not. Oh, come on. I don't know what the bloody brake is. I don't know what it is. What is it? L1? R1? I'm, I'm using an Xbox controller. But this is a Wii game I've emulated. So I don't even know what button is what. Uh, no, that's Kurz. Is that brake? No. N none of these are brake. Oh, no. I think I found the brake. Brake is R1. How does that make any sense? Uh, just uh, just ignore the fact it's the third. This is the very first attempt. Here we go. Lap one. F1 2009. Definitely not our third try. But now we know what brake is. We're underway. Uh, <laughs> What a shocking start this has been to the race over the years. But we've actually managed to break properly for turn one. Oh, what a move around the outside of, I think it was three, four cars there. We're up into P8 on the outside. Oh, is it Glock? Is it Glock going slowly there? No, it's me. It's me on the grass. Uh, the Taurus has overtaken me. Oh, dear. Bordet, he's got me. Massa, my, oh, my teammate's behind me. Okay, so maybe this is just where the, the Ferrari is really meant to be in the race to be honest yeah in 2009 the ferrari was not that hot let's be real okay uh curse yes yeah oh there we go curse abusing the curse a little bit easy does it the uh, original old layout of melbourne as we'll have it for many many of the f1 games coming up but a bit of curse use uh the the handling is a little bit uh skatey as you can see but we are making it round oh yes Second, third gear, underrated gears in Formula 1 cars. And underrated on this game is the meta is really just sliding around the corner, letting the car roll through. As we climb up to seventh, we've got Glock. Can we get Hamilton? One of the drivers we'll be seeing plenty of in this video. No! Just can't get him. Just, oh no, no, he's slow. Round the outside we go. Side by side. Oh, wheel to wheel. He squeezes me out. I've hit the brake by accident, but we curse to the line and across the first lap. That's P6 on the road. We're going to round up to the nearest row every time we go on to a new lap, a new game. So we're here on the third row of the grid. Lap number two, it's F1 2010. And we're in a whole new realm of graphical fidelity I must say compared to F1 2009 is we're gonna try and go around the outside of Lewis Hamilton come on is he still there oh he's still there he's still there wheel to wheel with uh oh, it's not even Hamilton it's Jensen Button it's my guy Jen JB Hamilton's up the road I thought we were caught oh he's crap <laughs> did he crash no Jensen Jensen, my man. I think he crashed. I think he crashed. We're up into P4, though. We're flying. Oh, God. Kibitz is behind us. No one. Oh, God. Oh, makes sense. I immediately bottle it driving as Alonso when I saw Kibitz. PTSD flashbacks from the 2010 finale there. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. We're down to 19th. It's all in the mud. We've got gravel on the... Is that gravel on the tyres? Kind of looks like just paint speckles, to be honest, from here. Right, let's not get caught up in a trolley train. Let's try and overtake Yano Trulli, at least, and get up to P18. Absolutely in the mud. We're going so well on 2009. We climbed up from last to P6, and now, as we cut that corner, as is tradition on the F1 games, to be honest... We're going to try and get up to P18. Let's go for the dive, shall we? Big, big dive. Big send. Just about to slow it down. What is... Oh, been absolutely spun by the curbs of death. That's uh, just classic F1 2010 there. Curbs of death. You, you touch the curbs with a bit of throttle 
at any point and you get spun. That really is the true F1 2010 experience. I actually would have been upset if we didn't get spun by a curb on this second lap of this race and this game. It's P23. It's going to be the last row. Lap number three on F1 2011. We have some making up to do now. We have some making up to do. And I always love the look of this Ferrari, you know, as we go to five red lights. This was, a, a, I think, a good looking Ferrari car. You know, the nose was nice and sleek. You know, I actually like this era of high nose cars as well. Yeah, it was, it was just a, a decent, decent car. And look at this stonking effort around the outside of some legends of the sports and fan favourites of Maldonado, Kamui, Kobayashi, two of the F123 icons, of course, in the uh, last game we'll be playing in this video. But so far, oh, it's it's a turn up for the books here. F1 2011 always used to be a wheel game, the lock-to-lock -lock driving on a controller was never that great, but I've had a great getaway. I'm already halfway up this order as we're now trying to go on Barrichello. Round the outside we go using a lot of curves. Uh, maybe a little bit too much there as I couldn't even turn the car. We were going so quickly. I and mean, he's really fighting me, you know, this Williams as we go on the outside. P11. Can we try and catch up to Petrov in the very different looking Lotus Renault now? in 2011 not the yellow of uh, bog standard Renault anymore black and gold is in and oh look at that steer that steering was awful all you had to do was get to the the maximum lock and the game would kind of do the turning angle for you it was just you didn't even have to play like f1 2010 had so much understeer and the curves were deadly 2011 went the other way it just basically drove for you most of the time as we're now trying to catch up to the uh, x sky f1 pundit Paul De Resta can't quite get him through the last corner. I'll take P10. I will take P10. F1 2012, the next lap. We're in the stepped nose era of Formula One in these V8 F1 cars. We go to five red lights and we're underway in this ugly duckling of a Ferrari. It really was ugly when it launched. It's still ugly now. And uh, it also drove like one, but somehow Alonso managed to drag it to a title fight with that man up the road, Sebastian Vettel, right now, side by side with uh, one of Alonso's fiercest rivals, Michael Schumacher, as we're going to try and overtake him and slice through the middle of him, and Romain Grosjean, and maybe even Mark Webber, as we're up to P5, just about, no, hold it, hold, no, 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 damn it, that was karma for taking out Mark Webber, that was really, that was, that was karma there, it's fine. We're still P8. We've still gone up a position, which I'll take, to be honest. We can only ask for progress as we over to... Oh, God. I what is the breaking on this game? The break... Penalty? The brakes feel like milk bottle tops. There's no braking. There is no braking power whatsoever. I remember th this was all about engine braking. You had to, like, really change down rapidly and make the engine do all the heavy lifting. Penalty reminder. Oh, does that mean we're not even, sir? Okay, drive through. Well, you know what, chief? You can keep your drive through because we're not doing another lap on this game. This is the... F oh, what is this? Understeer! Kobayashi's mugged us off. Massa's mugged us off. Oh dear, it's all come undone in the last sector. I hate this game. I hate this may be the first game I truly started career modes on. So it has a special place in my heart, but the handling can go to hell. This was horrendous. This was awful. We've only gained one position. We're on the same row at the end of lap four. Onwards to 2013. Yeah, this. Now this was a game. This was a consistent, enjoyable handling model. Was it realistic? No, but it was fun and it never changed. It was consistent. That's what this game was. And it was one of the old hood classics in the F1 community. We've uh, started P11, couldn't quite get that same row of P9 and 10, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna cut through these guys like a hot knife through butter. We've got uh, Weber on the left, Vettel on the right, Grosjean ahead of us. We're gonna try and get all three of them. As we go to the inside, Checo Perez in his very odd McLaren era on this game, on this lap as we're up into P4. We are flying, we are flying in this Ferrari. And this was another, this is one of my, uh, another one of my favorite Ferraris over the years. 2011, 2013 was a very nice looking Ferrari, especially from the T-cam. I appreciate a good onboard camera 
when you're playing the F1 games. You know, a, a nice looking Formula 1 car from the T-Cam is very underrated. And this was a very, very lovely looking Ferrari. We had the Italian flag and the inside. It just, you know, just had a nice shape. Although, I don't know what's up with some of these older F1 games. Why do they blow the driver's heads up? Like, what is going on with Alonso's head? Like, it's a, it's, a, it's a common pattern, like circa around 2015, that's the only time they solve this massive head problem, as we're going to just hold tight on P4, I think, to be honest here, which I'll take, I'll take, second, oh no, second row, maybe gets ruined by Mark Webber, please no, please no, second row, I'll take it, oh no, a little bit iffy on the rear end. But we'll take it. We'll take the second row. Uh, oh, God, no. No, I've just thought of the next game. No, no. Oh, for goodness sake. F1 2014. No. Oh, this is... Oh, this is pain. Going from 2013 to 2014. Five red lights. And we're on the way for one of the, one of the worst. Absolute worst. Codemasters F1 games ever made. I mean, graphically, handling wise, uh, sound wise, everything about this game was horrendous. Horrendous. But we've had a good start. We're battling Sebastian Vettel for B1. I don't know how in this uh, Hoover of a Ferrari. Oh, it's so bad. Oh, Raikkonen's overtaken us. I don't care. I simply don't care. I actually, I want to drive this with my eyes closed because it just looks so... How did it get worse? It looks worse than F1 2013, even though it's the exact same game, just with 2014 cars and so much worse handling. I want you to listen out for the revving when I change down. It is truly something else. Yeah, what's that? What is that? It sounds like a machine gun going off. It really does, as we're somehow holding up Lewis Hamilton in that uh, superior Mercedes car. It's a bad lock-up from us. My God, Lewis coming in with a, a massive dive there. Very aggressive. We've gone around the outside. We've actually made it work somehow. Somehow, we've actually held on to this second row in this Ferrari. Wonderful stuff there. And I'm just glad, I'm just glad to get off this game, to be honest. F1 2014, goodbye. And hello, F1 2015. A much prettier looking game. Bit of a chalked game, though, because it was so buggy that I can't even drive on a controller. I am driving on a keyboard for this one game only. And then going back to controller because the Xbox controller can't be recognized with this game. Um, yeah, but as you're going to see as we go on through the next couple of games, uh, this is a very pretty F1 game. I don't know how some of the later games, um, like in between, like F1 2018 or something, look so much uglier than this game, which came so many years before it, as we're doing quite well, you know, on a key. I think this happened last time when we did the every lap and the game gets older. I actually drove somewhat arguably better relative to the AI um, on a keyboard in F1 2015 than I did with a controller as we're actually closing up and keeping up with Nico Rosberg. I mean, this Ferrari was pretty damn decent in 2015 though. So, uh, you know, I think it just shows the performance differences. You know, 2014, we just did some miracle work getting that Hoover in on the second row. But this 2015 Ferrari obviously won that amazing Malaysian Grand Prix with Sebastian Vettel, who we're now driving as uh, for Ferrari. So uh, obviously using that performance to good use to get a front row start for the following lap for F1 2016. But we're going to soak in F1 2015. But it's the last time I will drive on a keyboard as we go back to controller. But yeah, F1 2015 had potential. No career mode though. Such a shame. Such a shame. But anyways, on to the next lap. And we move on to F1 2016. I think this is lap number eight, if my counting's correct, as we go to five red lights and we're underway. We're somewhat near. Oh no, that was the wrong button. I was going to say we're somewhere near the front row, not quite the front row, but we've been absolutely... Oh my God! What is going on here? <laughs> Absolute... We've got a safety car on this lap. 
What the hell was that? We got absolutely dead. Why is the replay camera in like 2 FPS? Fernando Alonso, we were driving at him earlier uh, in this race and earlier laps, but he's taken revenge for uh, letting go of his services and driving his Vettel in the Ferrari. Taken us out to turn one. We've taken out, <laughs> we took out Verstappen, I think that was, in his new Red Bull car this year. And uh, we've got a safety car on one of these laps. That's unbelievable. That's unreal. So hand back position to Verstappen. What? What? Oh my god. 2016. And they're already practicing what is to come with Verstappen and a safety car, is it? Huh? How's Alonso in this McLaren Honda? Managed to get P3. If you remember what happened this season, this is incredible. This is unheard of. Alonso and P3 in the McHonda. Oh, what? He just brake checked me. He just brake checked me. What is going on in this game? Change strategy. I'm going to have to change strategy. Yeah, I'm going to have to make a pit stop. I've got no front wing. I'm going to just go to last anyway, so I may as well pit into this lap. What? Great way. Great way to see out this game, huh? Right, well, here we go. This is how we're ending lap eight on F1 2016. We're going into the pits and moving on to uh, lap number nine. We're last place, but at least, at least we get to look at one of the prettiest Ferraris in the modern V6 era, in my opinion, as we go to five red lights and we're on the way on F1 2017. We're gonna ignore the unrealistically massive front tires. I don't know how we all just accepted that. Oh yeah, they've shipped a game where the front tires are way too big compared to what they were in real life. It's like looking at Dumbo with its ears, but at least I can look at the chassis, the lovely, lovely chassis of this 2017 Ferrari. These, you know, this new regulation, uh, produced some really pretty cars including this Ferrari one of my favorites still to this day it's been a very good start I must say we're up to P17 catching up to the legend that is Jolien Barmer as we send down the inside and we're now catching up to another pretty car of this uh, era which is the Toro Rosso where they changed their livery uh, for the first time now with a silver ball and uh, splashes of red on blue. I really think they should return to that livery. Rather than becoming the rumoured racing bulls, apparently, for 2024, I think they should just go back to Toro Rosso. It makes sense. Italian, you know, uh, you know, Red Bull in Italian and go back to this kind of livery. I think it would look much better than whatever the hell they're going to cook up for racing balls. Okay, calm. Right. Uh, now, can I make some last minute overtakes here in the last sector? Three wide. Three wide. Oh, we've just about slid in, which is very impressive with these very wide cars. And we catch up to the man who started uh, the reason why we're in last place. Fernando Alonso in the McLaren Honda. Orange and black now for this year for the first time. Up to P14. I'll take that. And we come to lap 10. It's almost the home stretch really. The last five laps as we come to five red lights. And we're underway here in Melbourne. Once again, it's a horrendous start. What the hell? Horrendous getaway for us. I do not remember the AI being this quick at starting on F1 2018. But can you see what I mean by why does this game look worse than some of the games that have come before it? Like just the jagged edges, the very unpolished finishing. Um, what I will say is having, you know, uh, try to get, you know, do, doing the quality to get the grid slot near enough to P14, the handling on a, on a controller at least is night and day so much better then like the last couple of games combined really like it's, it's intuitive and even though I had such a poor getaway I've actually driven with some sort of confidence they're up to P12 now um but yeah the sense of weight and balance in the car I'm noticing is there as we catch up to Sergio Perez in the very pink BWT racing is it was it racing point at this point I'm pretty sure it was racing point at, at this stage of F1 uh, I'm pretty sure as we have a, a very interesting corner there. Just ignore that corner cut. We're just riding the curb like a skateboard. And Perez is actually defending me quite well as we dive down the inside at Vettel's future teammate, Leclerc, the future Ferrari driver in the Alfa Romeo. Sauber as we get up into a top 10. Just about. How is Alonso doing this though? Once again, he's ahead of us in a very slow McLaren Renault now. But I mean, I guess it was a little bit better then. But uh, we've ended up in the top 10 
here on this lap. And as we step into F1 2019, this is now becoming a bit more familiar. You know, the memory is a bit stronger with these games coming up as we go to five red lights and we're on the way. It's not been a great start. We need to be making the most of this Ferrari with its illegal 2019 engine. Are you okay? Well, we made... We've not made the most of it at all, have we? We've not made them up. All that illegal power. For what? For what? The Torosso's taken us out. It's only going to get worse. We've got the 2020 Ferrari coming up. For goodness sake. We really are in the mud here on this next lap. Uh, we, we needed to make the most of 2019 off the back of 2018. And now we're here in the 2020 Ferrari. And, um, well, you, you should remember how awful this Ferrari was. So much drag, no balance in the corners. Where is Leclerc? I think he's P10. If we can get up to P10, I'll be very, very happy. But honestly, P I'll be happy with like P14, to be honest. And then we can try and make the use of the 2021 Ferrari as we dive down the inside. But this is familiar territory now, you know. Bang an F1 game. My team career mode came onto this one. And familiar in terms of handling-wise. Very enjoyable handling. Still to this day, people herald the handling on F1 2020. It's just, it's just fun. It's just fun. Consistent, again, is a word knocked about. Uh, oh, my God. What the hell is that? What was that? Oh, you know what? It's 2020. I'm certainly driving like Sebastian was sometimes in 2020. That was a poor mistake. We've lost a bit of wing, but what did I say? P15, I'll be happy with it. I was going to say I should be good from now on because it's familiar in terms of the, the way you deploy ERS with the overtake mode, etc., etc. But uh, I was just a lemming there and I drove into a wall. Good. And look at that. Charles is actually holding. This is how bad the Ferrari is. He's actually holding up this entire train ahead of us. Tail ended by Kafia as I get overtaken by Magnussen. No, not so fast, Sunshine. Not so fast. We're going to hold. We're going to hold on to P15 and we're going to go on to the next lap looking to make amends and get into that top 10. Last three laps now coming up in this race. All we need to do is just set ourselves up for a good next lap because we know we have that 2022 Ferrari coming in. Okay, it's oh, it's an awful start. Awful start. A lot of movement going on. The AI getting punchier and punchier now in these last laps of this race as we're going to maintain P14. Maybe deployed a bit too much through that corner. Can we die from here? Is it really possible? We're going to go for it. Oh, oi, oi, oi. On the inside of the stroll. The I remember the low speed was so frustrating on this game. So much understeer at the lower lower speed corners compared to 2020 where there was more sliding about, which is obviously a little bit unrealistic, but it was way more enjoyable to drive. I think we can definitely get P12 here. Um, we're going to dive, dive down the inside of Sonoda. We've ironically got Vettel just ahead of us, the man we were just driving as before in P11 in the Aston Martin. Just outside the top 10. Oh my God, what is that understeer? What is that understeer? Come on. Where is the turn in? Um, we can, I, I think from P12, you know, with the 2022 performance, second last lap coming up, I reckon we can we can do some work to get ourselves up towards that top frame. It's the second last lap of this race through the years. I'm not thrilled to be back on F122 at all, but I am thrilled to maybe have some performance with the 22 Ferrari. It's an okay start compared to the others ahead of us. Let's just keep it clean into turn one, and then we'll see what we can do on this lap. Come on, can we get ahead of Joe? Yes, we can. Up into P11 now going to make a big dive here. Big, big dive needed. Hopefully slow it down. Oh, now the AI are moving about in the break zone. You can tell this is just a year ago. The AI are much cleverer. They actually move about a little bit and they're a little bit more competitive, but we're in a very good car here of the 2022 Ferrari. And of course, for the first time, we have the new Australia layout. No more is that slow right and then left. We just slingshot onto this straight and we've got some good speed in a straight line in this Ferrari. So let's go for the pass on Valtteri up to P8. This will be, we've used a lot of battery there, but needs must, needs must. Can we get Fernando Alonso? Oh, got caught up on the curb there a little bit. Going to go for the dive on the Alpine. I think we're going to have to go for the dive on the Alpine. Big, big lunge. Oh, very late, very late. Up to P7. Okay, you know what? If that's it, I'll be happy with that. I don't think we're getting another position and uh, I'm just happy to be seeing the back of this god-awful game with its god-awful handling. P7, I'll take it. I'll take it. P7, 
our lucky number P7, onto the very last lap of this race. Here we are then, it's the last lap from 2009 to 2023. Fiery lights are out and we're underway for the last lap of this race of the F1 games through the history. Oh, it's such a good start. I almost go into the back of Carlos Sainz as we go around the outside of one, two, and we're up into fourth. Can we get second place? Perez is walked away with this one as we're going to get the McLaren, I think. Russell will send this the long way around. We'll dive down the inside. It's a little bit deep, but we get the job done. Oh, sorry, it's not Perez. It's Max Verstappen. Sorry, uh, uh, yeah, pardon me. Of course, of course it's Max Verstappen dominating this one. Even in this fun little video of going through the F1 games, Verstappen is going to end up winning. But remember how far we've come. All those F1 games from 2009 to 2023. Kind of mad we're here now on the current modern latest F1 game. But as you can see, much like 2023 in real life, Verstappen's got a massive margin. I'm pretty damn happy coming through from what was last place in that 09 Ferrari to coming through to be P2. It's where Leclerc's been used to in 2023 many, many times. That is going to be second place in the end of this race. Guys, if you have enjoyed that one, be sure to hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And if you are new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time.